Hey, I'm Nick Boy, and welcome to Pocket for Friday, the 4th of March. Today on the show, mudslinging, Pokemonin, and ask for pockets. Asks for pockets. Ing. Cut! Alright, here's what's been making headlines. Now, the first story is a big one, but it's a doozy. The creator of Spin Tires has been accused of intentionally sabotaging the game by publisher Uvi. Developer Pavel Zagrabelnich, pretty sure I didn't get that right, suggested as early as last year that the relationship between he and the publishers was not good. Speaking to Eurogamer last week, Pavel claimed that Uvi owed him money and said, I haven't had a meaningful communication with Uvi for many months, maybe a year. Sounds dodgy, Uvi. I'm on Team Pavel. Uvi denied that they owed any money and countered with an argument that Pavel had built time bomb code into the game, which is now causing a mass wave of players reporting crashes, which appeared to be triggered at a certain time and date. That's dodgy, Pavel. I'm on Team Uvi. To Gama Sutra, Pavel defended himself, stating, I don't understand who and why started the rumors of sabotaging. Apparently they are based on reverse engineering spin tires code, but there is in fact a time related bug. A self check uses time functions to see if game wasn't cracked by pirates, which was not fixed in time because we have little to no communicating with Uvi. Well, I don't know anymore. I'm on team Nick. When in doubt, team Nick. There are still roughly 100,000 active users of the game who are suffering from this falling out. However, an unofficial patch is available for those who wanted to dodge the apparent piracy protection bug. People like pirates. The game has been removed from the Steam store until further notice. Valve has finally apologized for the caching breach which occurred over Christmas during their winter sale. In an email to the affected accounts, Valve said, we are sorry this happened. So we need it, Gabe. It's March. Busy on Reddit. No Man's Sky has received a release date. Earlier this week, the PlayStation Store teased a potential release this week. Well, we're going to have to wait a little longer as the game will be launching on PC and PS4 on the 23rd of June here in Australia. However, pre-orders are now available on both platforms. But before all that, Paragon is dropping, apparently. It seems like we only learned of this game's existence last week, but it's launching into early access on the 18th of March for people who purchased the 20 US dollar starter pack. Moving on, an EA CFO, Blake Jorgensen, announced at the business summit that the publisher is making 650 million US dollars per year through their Ultimate Team mode. The Ultimate Team appears in their FIFA, Madden, and NHL games and allows players to make microtransaction purchases of new players for their competitive online squads. And finally, Nintendo released a direct with a few exciting notes. Monster Hunter X is coming to the West later this year as Monster Hunter Generations. SNES games are coming to the 3DS store. There's a new Kirby game called Kirby Planet Robobot, which will be available on June 10th. And Fire Emblem Fates has a release date of May 20th in Europe. Not sure about Australia yet, but soon you'll be able to play it in every other continent on the planet. Give me your game, Nintendo. It's time for thing of the day. On Twitter, at GameMix shared a GIF celebrating the 20th anniversary of Pokemon. It's an animated illustration which shows how far the series has come. Now it's time for our first Ask Pocket of the Year, back by popular demand by John. Ask Pocket is of course the segment where you ask me invasively personal questions and I answer them on Pocket. And our first question comes in from Slap My Wookie. Nick Boy, how do you feel about your TV appearances and do you approach the TV segment with the same frame of mind as when making Pocket? 
Hey, Slap My Wookie. I tend to approach the TV segment pretty much the same, actually. The only thing I clamp down on is in-jokes because I'm actually speaking to an audience, most of whom have no idea who I am, except for, you know, you guys, where you guys get all the references that I'm actually making. But the main reason that they ended up putting the sort of first play segment in the show was to keep that pocket feel. So we tend to try to make it as loose and improvisational as we can, which is exactly how we make pocket. Nothing changes shooting wise as well. It's in the same room, it's the same computer, it's the same Pete, so it all feels natural. But that being said, when I'm presenting on camera rather than acting, I tend to be pretty relaxed and loose anyway, so where it ends up doesn't really make a difference. The only thing is that our TV spots tend to be much shorter than our pocket episodes, so I am trying to keep that in mind when we're filming as well. As in, when we're making a normal 15 minute pocket play, then we usually play the game for about half an hour, 40 minutes or so, and then we cut it down. And so because we're playing for that long, then little things start happening in the game that become recurring jokes and things that I invest in and develop little storylines and that sort of thing. So I hook into those things more and they get scattered more and more throughout the episode. I mean, take the Bear Simulator episode of Pocket this week, for example. I see a duck, I try to get it, it flies away. So then every time I see a duck, it becomes a thing that it's getting more and more important to me to catch that damn bird. And ultimately, it became my downfall. And that's what killed me in the end, because apparently if a bear swipes at a duck too many times, it dies from exhaustion. Oh no! No, come back! Come back! I just wanted to play! Don't... Don't fly away! Please! Please! I just want a hug! Hug! So about three minutes of that entire episode is Nick v Duck. So to save the show's editors time and hassle, I tend to not go on those tangents and I try to stick to the main focused part of the game as much as possible, and not stray off the gun path. Because the more I do that, the more references and jokes and things start tying together and building on each other, and the harder it is to cut all that stuff out. But other than that, it's pretty much exactly the same. All right, our next question comes in from Mr. Hercules, who says, have you ever punched someone in the face? No. Are you offering? T Peter257 wants to know, what is a game that you want to love but can't stand? Hey T Peter, look, it's not exactly a game I can't stand, but it's more a game I can't understand. Eve Online. These stories that come out of that game are some of the reasons that video games are amazing. It's the closest you can get to being a space pirate because for all intents and purposes, you are in fact a space pirate. The only problem is I don't know how to space pirate. I've installed the game five times. I've bought five content packs. I've made five characters and every single time I do it, I go, this is it. This is the time I'm gonna get into EVE Online and someone's gonna do a story about how I ambush some spaceship somewhere. And then every time I start playing it, I just go, I don't get it. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know how to do any of this. But that's what happened with WoW. And that's what happened with Dota. Those were games that I tried and I didn't like, and then I tried again a year later and I fell in love with them. It's been five years now for me with EVE. I want to love EVE. I want to be part of those stories. I just don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. So if any of you out there play EVE and know more about it than how to just install the game, please hit me up and tell me what I'm missing. This is lucky year number six, guys. Let's do it. All right, moving on now to Katie Guacamole. Nick boy, should I eat Mexican for lunch? Yes, but judging by your name, it's going to cost you $2 extra. Also, you asked this yesterday, so I can't help. But I hope you did. Moving on and Chimichanga wants to know, what did you have for lunch? Dumplings. But judging by your name, I'm guessing you had Mexican. Two dollars extra for guac. What a f***ing ripoff. And finally, Good Game wants to know, when did you decide to have Baby Sam? Look, Good Game, you don't decide to have a Baby Sam, okay? A Baby Sam is something the universe gives you. It was November. John, Pete and I were staying back late at the office. We'd had a few drinks, things were getting a little silly. At one point, John put on some mood music and things just happened. It was a case of three bearded men coming together and asking, what if there was a fourth bearded man here? And suddenly Baby Sam appeared. It was either that or Pete was sick of delivering the episode to iView upstairs every day. I can't remember. All right, that's it for today's episode. My pocketeers, please let me know in the comments what you had for lunch, because apparently that is what everyone wants to know. And also let us know what you're playing this weekend. And while you're on the internet, make sure you check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. 
want to meet fellow Pocketeers, then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV and follow Pocket at Nick Boy, at Pureth, at Gigi, at Monkey, and at Sam Gee. Baby Sam made it in. There are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's Thing of the Day graphic was made by Cianimus Prime. Thank you very much, Cianimus Prime. If you've made a thing, please send it in. Until Monday, Nick Boyer. Sam, say Sam out. Sam out.